The world seems to be panicking because of China, Iran, Moscow, and Saudi Arabia's relationship. I don't know why people are talking about this so much. Well, hopefully this video can help us understand. Let's get to it. Six months ago, we told you about an alliance that's taking shape. Chimps. China, Iran, Moscow, Chimps. Saudi Arabia. And over, uh, the over the last 48 hours, we've seen developments which confirm that new equations have been established with long-term strategic consequences. CHIMS, China, Iran, Moscow, Saudi Arabia with the UAE in close strategic formation. The Allies also now form a ring around the oil-rich Caspian. Azerbaijan on the western coast of the Caspian could become the next partner securing Russia's southern frontiers. The beginning may have been on some ambitious planning board for a while, but the world was witness to a dramatic beginning when Beijing early this year brokered Saudi Arabia and Iran's diplomatic relations. American policy, which since the Iran revolution in 1979 has centered around a confrontation between Saudi Arabia and Iran was left in scattered pieces to say the least. Washington could not hide its shock and since then has been trying to patch together these pieces. Now you see Moscow has stepped forward to seal its part of the deal. The Russian president Vladimir Putin who has preferred to stay in his own country ever since the International Criminal Court, remember, issued orders for his arrest on the charge of kidnapping Ukrainian children to Russia during the war, has stepped out of Russia to visit the UAE and Saudi Arabia. Remember, neither Putin... But Putin also... Didn't he go to South Africa? I think he went to South Africa for the BRICS meeting. Oh, I might have been mistaken. I thought he went nor she came to Delhi for the G20. It was the second time, in fact, that Putin had cancelled a visit to India. Putin has left Russia only twice since the Ukraine war started. Mm. And yesterday, he received a royal welcome. The first country on his roster, the UAE, Abu Dhabi, rolled out the carpet for him. And how? Putin was greeted with jets, horses, camels and flags. His plane was flanked by a Sukhoi 35, uh, by four Sukhoi 35 fighter jets as he arrived there for the COP28 climate talks. Mm, special welcome. But Putin stated in one of his interviews that his partnership with other nation is not a partnership against other nations, but a partnership to enhance their own national interest. And he also stated that the uh, military partnership is not for is not against other nations, but also for their national defense system. Which I don't know what people take of that. You know, tell me what you think when you hear that. His limousine drone through the uh, grounds of the sprawling palace, flanked by camels and horses with soldiers holding the Russian flag. Emirati military jets trailed, drew the Russian tricolor in the skies. He received a 21 gun salute. Mm, that's beautiful. This unusual trip abroad for the Russian president was supposed to be a great show of support between the two countries at a time when the Ukraine war has forced the world to pick sides. The UAE president, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, welcomed his quote-unquote dear friend to Abu Dhabi. The two leaders last met in June at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, where the UAE head of state was the guest of honor. And during their talks, the two leaders discussed a mutually beneficial bilateral future and a strategic partnership. Putin pointed out that relations between Moscow and Abu Dhabi had reached an unprecedentedly high level. 
He described the UAE, in fact, as Russia's largest trading partner in the Arab world. Putin said that the two countries are actively expanding industrial cooperation while being involved in several major joint oil and gas ventures. The leader of Russia and the UAE, they also talked about the war in Gaza. They talked about the need to work towards permanent peace in the Israel-Palestine Palestine conflict. And yes, the other war, of course, the one in Ukraine also featured in their talks. And after the UAE, Putin went to Saudi Arabia. He met with the Saudi Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. Discussions in Riyadh also touched on the topic of oil, the war in Ukraine and the war in Gaza. Putin told the Saudi Crown Prince that he expects to see him in Moscow soon. Quote unquote, nothing can hinder the development of our friendly ties. That's what he told MBS. This man is making, um, Remember, this prince is making very big moves. Very, very big moves. And it doesn't seem anybody or any leader actually hates him. He's able to go to America, have a good discussion to move the nation forward, come to Russia. And I think that's very intelligent, you know. I think he might be very intelligent. I'm seeing the same thing with the Prime Minister of um, India, Modi. They are able to, I don't want to say play both sides, but they're able to get along with everybody and still be strict with their attempts and principles in the way they do business, which, you know, I commend. Remember, they are all part of the oil cartel consisting of 13 of the world's major oil exporting countries known as OPEC+. Plus. We can be absolutely certain that President Xi in Beijing, the closest contemporary ally of Putin, was watching this show with a quiet smile of great satisfaction. And since the war in Ukraine started, leading the West to impose harsh economic sanctions on Moscow, the UAE emerged as Russia's key trade partner. And earlier this year, OPEC Plus decided to cut oil output, which had far-reaching consequences, by the way, for U.S. gas prices. And when they met on Thursday, Putin and MBS called on all OPEC Plus members to join an agreement on oil output cuts. In October, Putin was invited by dear friend Xi Jinping for China's third BRI forum. Their ties, you see, are thriving, despite Western criticism or the ICC arrest warrant. In fact, China says it has the right to collaborate with whichever country it chooses. And trade between the two countries soared since the war. Nothing can sever this bond, much to the dismay of the US, of course. But this is not the conclusion. Another nation enters the fray, further cementing this alliance while America and its allies watch helplessly. Iran. That's right. Today, the Iranian president, Ibrahim Raisi, visits Russia, officially invited by Putin. The focal points of discussion during Raisi's single-day visit will include the expansion of economic ties between Iran and Russia. It seems like the official name of how the organization is called, or this is just BRICS, like some members from BRICS, because Iran recently was in BRICS, China is a BRICS nation, Saudi Arabia is also a BRICS nation right mm -hmm. i think so so this is not a meeting outside of briggs only that some of the brig me members are not here or we're not i don't know but is teams a new thing that's what i'm trying to figure out or is it just like the partnership they already have through briggs now beyond economics regional concerns such as the gaza conflict will undoubtedly be high on their agenda the meeting with the iranian leader follows a day after putin's visit to west asia since the invasion of ukraine russia has turned to iran for weapons with iranian drones on top of that shopping list they have helped turn the tide of the war in russia's favor this is addressed by economic partnerships as both nations confront a cascade of sanctions led by the U.S. and its allies. This year, China made its presence felt in West Asia. Just last week, the UAE and China, in fact, inked a multi-billion dollar deal. Before that, Beijing hosted foreign ministers from four Arab countries to discuss ending the Israel-Hamas war. It all started last year when Xi Jinping visited Riyadh in what was termed as a, as a crucial visit, it was the biggest diplomatic initiative in the Arab world, in fact. It showed Saudi Arabia's intention to expand global alliances beyond a long-standing partnership with the West. 
it was the coming together of a global economic powerhouse and the Gulf energy giant. It completes this axis of nations influential not only in their neighborhood but also across the world. CHIMS is an axis that is ready to curb America's sole superpower status and dominance equally important. Iran is also at the hub of this geopolitical realignment. It is forging closer ties with Russia and China, hoping to ease its economic woes and build a powerful new axis of power, one that is capable of countering the US-led West. And let's not forget Iran's decision last year to sell armed suicide drones to Moscow to aid its war against Ukraine. All three say they face multiple threats, a sort of military as well as economic strangulation by the US and its friends. For Iran, the picture is clear. It has been at a virtual war with America for half a century after all, and most of the time alone. And today, it is part of a powerful alliance. Its isolation has been broken. We are calling CHIMS an important development in international relations because of its great ability to control the Asian scenario for the foreseeable future. And there's only one loser here, the United States of America. <laughs> America may remain Why does it feel like it's a pitch between you know, pitching chimps against America. It's like four nations, China, Iran, Moscow, Saudi Arabia, and you're pitching it against just America. Um, I don't know. Shouldn't it be like a pitch against the G7 or the Western nations? <laughs> but the thing is, I understand though, because sometimes, maybe all the time, America portrays themselves as, as the world policemen, like somebody had mentioned in a video prior. So... Maybe that's why she's making it, making the context this way. Superpower, but chimps could become a second military and economic strategic power. There is one collateral question. Has China filled the strategic vacuum in the Gulf left by India? We will leave that for you to ponder upon. <laughs> we are now available in... Okay, that was a good one. The vacuum left by India. India... Yeah, Modi is a smart man. I like how he plays his cards. He doesn't want to be one-sided, so he's here and there, so he can do business with everybody. I think when, was it the foreign minister? One of the ministers, I think probably Jishank, Jishanka it was, was asked why they still keep getting oil products from Russia, or petroleum products from Russia. And they said, we're just doing business, <laughs> like everybody else is doing business. Your European people are buying products from Russia. Why is it us you're talking about? <laughs> I'm just um, paraphrasing. He didn't say it in that manner. But my point is India is just focused on the national, their national interest like every other leader should be. Smash the like button. Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.